Hey, what's up guys? Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to fix a bad scroll wheel. Um, there are other videos on YouTube showing you how to do this, and well, I'm going to show you a few of those methods, but uh, this is for when all of those have failed. So, and the scroll wheel was really bad before, but I tried some other things to get it working, and it did get better, but it's not 100%. Here it's just really inconsistent. Sometimes it registers, sometimes it doesn't. So if your scroll wheel isn't scrolling or it's stuttering or scrolling the wrong way, this is how to fix it. So first you're going to want to get your mouse open. All mice are different, but just try to locate all the screws. Keep in mind they hide them under stickers and the rubber feet sometimes. Once you get it open, you want to locate the encoder that connects to the scroll wheel. Um, these could be soldered to the board, but mine here is attached to wires I can pull out. Now, these instructions are for mechanical encoders, and a typical one is going to look like this. The other one out there is an optical encoder, and it's going to look a lot more complicated than this. But, if you're having these problems, uh, it's most likely one of these. Now, the problem is that the contacts in this thing aren't, well, they're not making proper contact. If uh, you're lazy, you could just try to get some contact cleaner like this, spray it in the crevices, and then work the scroll wheel back and forth. Um, this is what people do to fix sliders and potentiometers as well. If you're lucky, this could fix it. I did this first, and it did get better for a day or two, but then, well, it started acting up again. The second way is to open this thing up and give it a proper cleaning. Um, you'll notice on these things, like some buttons, switches, and potentiometers, that there are these tabs here. Well, that means you can open them. The thing is, well, they're not really meant to be opened and closed too often. After you bend the metal so much, they just break, like you can see here. Uh, I broke this one. So, well, maybe you can open these things like two or three times before you risk breaking them, so uh, keep that in mind. Anyway, we open them up, and what do we see? Now, how do these things work anyway? Well, hint, um, you can see it's not symmetrical, and uh, there are these little notches here. Anyway, how they work isn't important, but basically this thing lets the mouse know which direction you're turning, and depending on how many on-off signals it's getting, how fast you're turning it. The important thing is that these metal legs or wipers make good contact with this metal track here. So uh, the second way uh, to fix this is, now that it's open, we can clean the metal contacts properly with contact cleaner and a cotton swab. Then you could bend these wipers up to make uh, sure they're pushing up against the track. Put it all together and pray. Well, you don't have to pray, but, well, if you search mechanical encoder and mouse uh, on Google, you'll find loads of people just cursing these things. Why? Well, they're just not really dependable, especially after they get older. That's why they're optical scroll wheels now. Anyway, so I did the second fix too, and it did work for about a week, and then it started acting up again. Um, that's where I am now. So, let's finally fix this thing. Um, now, if we did want to do this properly, we could treat these things as just consumables, like uh, we do for switches. Eventually, they just wear out. This mouse here, well, I already replaced two switches. Uh, you can just buy them and replace them. Trouble is, well, this encoder doesn't have a part number, and I'm not sure if I, if I order a new one, if it'll be the right size. I guess I could just buy a new mouse, but that ain't fun, and uh, it's a shame to just throw this thing away. So let's fix it. So back to the problem. Uh, this wiper isn't making proper contact with the track. Uh, after time, the metal on the wiper well, the metal just loses its elasticity and doesn't push up on that track. Now, if we wanted to over-engineer this thing, we could do something like this, um, like you find on trains and cable cars. Uh, this thing's called a pantograph, and its job is just to make sure that the train is connected to that electrical wire above. If it loses contact, well, your train loses power. You can't let that happen. Um, so they got this thing, and uh, notice those big beefy springs below. Uh, they ensure the contacts on the arm stay pressed against that wire. 
So if we really wanted to make sure that we keep contact between the wiper and the track, we'd have one of these things. So let's do it. What we're going to do is make a tiny little spring system that will keep those wires pressed up against the track. Uh, it'll be difficult, but that's the... Okay, just kidding. What we're going to do is just cram some foam under there. Um, although the spring idea would be cool. Just, yeah, that's not happening. So what you want to do is get yourself some foam. Uh, you could search around the house and try to find some good stuff. Um, all foam's not built the same. The packaging foam isn't going to hold up very well. Uh, you want something that springs back well. I got this from a washable foam face mask. You want to cut it out to be uh, the diameter of the piece that holds the wiper. Now I know you might just be tempted to cut little pieces and try to cram them underneath those wipers, but um, we want to make sure it's one piece. That way uh, we have a better chance of getting everything to stay in place and not squeeze out beneath the wiper and then get crammed above it. That'd be bad. And now, originally I thought I'd cut it up into this perfect little shape with a hole in the center and notches on the side so the metal wipers could come up through the foam, but uh, working with something so small isn't easy. And I found out, well, it doesn't look like it's necessary. You don't need to cut the hole in the middle because inserting the scroll wheel axle thingy into the encoder will just push through the foam. As for the notches that the wiper can go through, well, it just it depends how patient you are. Uh, it's really hard working with such a small piece of foam. So I just worked the wipers around the foam. Um, although I did try to cut little notches, but I don't know if it really helped. Anyway, the key thing is here is, one, make sure there's sufficient foam beneath the wipers. Um, cutting too small of a foam disc will, well, if there's no foam pushing up on the wiper, then it's not going to work. Two, uh, make sure the foam isn't too thick. If you're fixing a gaming mouse, um, you're going to have to spend a lot of time working with the thickness. Um, it will affect how easily it turns. Uh, mine ended up pretty tight, but I didn't care so much. Uh, it did loosen up over time, though, so that was good. Three, you want to make sure the wipers can make contact with the track. You don't want the foam between the wipers and the track. Um, mine here doesn't look like they're showing proud, but I tested it and it worked. And here's what it looks like after I use it for a while. You can see it looks set up well after it's been used a bit. Anyway, put it all back together and it's all good. Again, it is tight, but uh, it did loosen up a bit after a little use. Try to give it some time and see if it gets better. If not, you can go and uh, try and do it again with a thinner piece of foam. And there you go, you fixed your mouse, saved it from a landfill, and uh, saved some money. So far I changed two switches and the encoder on this thing. Um, this mouse cost 40 bucks, so if I just threw it out and bought another one every time something went wrong, I'd be down $120 and uh, would have made a lot of e-waste. So, alright guys, that's it. Uh, again, I'll put my usual guarantee on this thing. Um, if this thing breaks within six months, I'll just delete this video in which case you would have never seen it. Um, if it breaks after six months, I'll just add a follow-up vid. But if you're watching this, you can look down and see uh, when the video was posted. If it's still up and there's no follow-up video after six months, then you know it's still working all right. Finally, as for fixability rating, well, it's hard to say. Um, the rationale behind this is simple, uh, just making sure two metal pieces keep contact. I mean, we could make one of these, uh, and it would definitely work, but uh, who's going to do that? But working with foam and getting it fit, well, it can be a bit more of an art, but uh, it's completely doable. So alright guys, take care. See you next time.